up, it takes that little extra oomph to yeah. get through those days. We continue our celebration of nurses and what they do for the community. We'll also hear from experts of all kinds to take care of you financially, legally, and of course, physically when it comes to your health. Then take a deep breath <sighs> because we're going over all things air quality. All of that and more is today on SoFlo Health. It's an absolutely beautiful day here in Weston. I'm at one of my favorite parks outside for a nice little stroll to enjoy some fresh air. <sighs> There's nothing quite like getting outside and enjoying some fresh air. And we've talked about the importance of the air you breathe here on SoFlo Health. We previously had an episode where we talked about the benefits of living by the sea and breathing in the sea air. We've also talked about keeping your home safe by making sure that you update your filters and other hazards that you should look out for when in your home. And we're out here today in sunny South Florida. However, is this air actually fresh? Well, most of the time, yes, it is. How can you tell? Well, a simple way is to check your smartphone or go to your favorite weather app, and you can check the AQI or the air quality index. So in my case, here in Weston, it says that it's good, and the number is 35 on the air quality. Now, anything under 100 is pretty good for most people. If you're sensitive, then in that case, under 50 is where you'd want to be, and that's mostly for people that are going to be putting out some extra effort, causing them to breathe in more of that air. Reasons that it may be higher of a number and more pollutant could be from Saharan dust clouds that make their way over here, could be from wildfires that we experience regularly, or from high levels of pollen. But we're gonna get into all of the information you need to know today about air quality, but first, watch this. If you have back pain, listen up. I'm at the Jackson Health Medical Campus here to meet with Dr. Levy of U Health Jackson Neurosurgery. Let's go meet Dr. Levy and find out what you can do about that back pain. As promised, I'm joined by Dr. Levy of U Health Jackson Neurosurgery. Doctor, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. My pleasure. Well, let's talk about something that people feel often, back pain. They're saying, oh, my back's killing me, or they go talk to their friend, they say, what should I do? Oh, I should go to a doctor, I should go to a chiropractor. What should someone do about back pain, and how do we know if it's serious? Uh, great question. So 80% of people during their lifetime have serious back pain issues that are bad enough to take them out of work for a while. Um, most people get better on their own, uh, and the ones that don't uh, obviously need treatment, and the ones that fail medical treatment are the ones that we see in neurosurgery. And how does someone know that it's time to see you? So typically patients who have back pain and, and see their primary care doctor or their neurologist or rheumatologist will embark on a, a set of conservative treatments. And once that uh, fails and the imaging studies that are often ordered are, are suggestive of something surgical, that's often when we see these patients. And what are the options when it does come to surgery? So there, there are a lot of uh, different options that span from minimally invasive to open procedures, and it's really about selecting the best procedure for the individual patient. What is the process that somebody can expect if they need to go through something like this? In many cases, especially when it's minimally invasive, those patients could potentially go home that day or the next day. That's wonderful. Why is this important to address and not let linger? It's important that you, again, try to treat things conservatively, but if they fail uh, and you have things that would support doing surgery, if you wait too long, then your outcomes are not going to be as good. That's why it's important to see a spine uh, specialist and hopefully a spine specialist who has experience. And we have uh, seven spine surgeons that are dedicated only to, to spine. Uh, and so that, that's where the experience comes from. So somebody watching at home right now who's experiencing back pain, who should give you a call? If a patient has back pain and they fail conservative treatment, and especially if they have back and leg pain, for example, and they have imaging studies that show spinal stenosis, a disc herniation, certainly a tumor, uh, or an infection, uh, they can find out about us uh, through the web. That will drive you to the place that you would uh, go to to make an appointment. 
Yes, well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. South Florida is famous for beautiful weather, sun, sand, surf, and as I was talking about earlier, we've generally got great air quality all year round. Other parts of the world are known for smog and their air quality not being as good. And you might think, well, I'm in South Florida, so I'm safe for all of that. Well, not necessarily. Believe it or not, when we experience wildfires, our air quality can be just as bad as some of those other more populated metropolitan areas that have those pollutants in the air regularly. So it's important to make sure that you check the air quality, especially during the times when we have wildfires. So if you go outside and you smell ash, maybe before you go for that run, go inside, check the air quality and see if that's something that you would like to do. Other than that, year round, get outside and enjoy the fresh air. We don't wanna to be too smug, I mean, smug about our air quality after all. We're back at Conviva Proactive Senior Care, and I'm joined by Dr. Ferguson Ramirez today here in Kendall. Doctor, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having me. Of course. So tell us, what happens here? This is a primary practice, mm -hmm. and we offer any services that patients currently receive from a primary care provider. For instance, we offer routine wellness care, mm -hmm. labs, diagnostics, disease management programs, referral, specialist referrals, mm -hmm. with excellent patient experience. And what else do you offer? We offer 24-7 access to on-call providers, mm -hmm. lab drawing station in-house, mm -hmm. test reminders, to stay on top of things like lab work, screenings, immunizations, and more. We offer a wellness center with fitness classes, yoga, Zumba, nutrition support, free activities, and more. Excellent. Well, it sounds like you have everything someone could need. Yes, we do. <laughs> Great. And what drew you to come here in the first place? So many things. And I really do think this is the future of healthcare. I love helping patients be more informed and more proactive about their health. Here, our patients are busy. And I love being a part of this innovative care system that makes getting care so easy, so convenient for our patients, because I think this is the way healthcare should be. Great. Yeah, and ultimately that ends up in better care for the patient. A hundred percent. Great. Yes. And if people would like to learn more, how can they? Give us a call and go to our website. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming. You got appreciate it. it. Find out what to do about a wrongful death claim and when to get started investing after the break on SoFlo Health. Focusing on you, innovations in modern medicine from your team of experts at UHealth, the University of Miami Health System. Jennifer Bryant was working her hospital shift when she suddenly lost grip strength in her left hand. When I looked out of my hand, I also noticed it had a mild, mild tremor. The nurse anesthetist walked straight to the ER, where UHealth neurologist Dr. Erica Marulanda quickly treated her for stroke. Stroke is really time sensitive because every second that you don't have blood going to that area of the brain, either because of bleeding or because of a blockage, those neurons aren't getting blood, they're not getting oxygen. With stroke, unlike heart attack, there usually isn't any pain. That's why if you're experiencing stroke-like symptoms, it is critical to get into care as quickly as possible. And to remember the acronym, be fast. B is for balance, E is for eyes, so double vision, loss of vision. F is for face, so a droopy face. A for weakness in your arm, S for speech, and then T is for time to remind you that Time is brain, and it's time to call 911. Jennifer, whose stroke was caused by three congenital heart defects, received clot-busting medication right away. I have no neurological defects at all. Jennifer is back to her active lifestyle, even running in the New York Marathon. Her message, don't ignore symptoms. It could save your life. That team here at University of Miami, that's why I'm here. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. We've been talking about air quality and the importance of it, especially when you're outside, which is generally where the fresh air is at here in South Florida. But it's time to bust a myth. And that is that you can always see when the air quality is not so great. Either you see the Saharan dust in the sky or the ashes are falling from the Everglades when it's on fire or that there's smog in the air or pollen. Well, not necessarily. There are plenty of biological substances such as pollen, mold, 
dust mites, fungus, and bacteria that can be in the air affecting air quality that you can't see. So it's good to be careful and make sure that you're checking the air quality on a regular basis, or at least most of the time. And uh, with that, I'm gonna breathe some fresh air, keep walking, you watch this. I'm joined again by Mitch of Panther Panther in San Pedro and we're talking about health and law. We've been going over a lot of subjects over the previous segments we've done together, but today we're talking about critical injury, or God forbid somebody passes away in some sort of accident. What happens in that scenario? What do we do about it? All right, well, that scenario in our term is called a wrongful death claim. So if you're killed in a wrongful yes. death medical malpractice case, without the survivor, nobody can pursue a claim. However, if it's an auto accident or a slip and fall or a premises liability case and you're killed, your family can make a recovery under certain circumstances. Is this something that needs to be set up or arranged ahead of time to be effective? Generally, it's not the kind of thing you plan for or prepare for, right. but once you pass away, you get to the attorney, the attorney opens up the estate. The lawsuit can't be filed in the name of the deceased because they legally don't exist, but it gets filed on behalf of such right. and such as the estate of or personal representative of the estate of. So this is not something you can do by yourself. This is something you clearly need a lawyer right. to work with. I imagine it is helpful though if you have an estate set up or like a living trust or something set up ahead of time. I encourage people consult with a probate lawyer, an estate lawyer, set up a, a will, um, do all those things so that when and if this circumstance happens, you don't leave your family out in the lurch. Yes, and this is definitely an area where you want to speak with an expert. If people would like to learn more, how can they? They can contact us at Panther Panther and San Pedro, go online, ask to our frequently asked questions under pantherlaw.com, or give me a call. I'm happy to speak to you about yeah. it. It's a tough subject, but it's important to hear, so thank Thank you so much for the great info. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Another air quality myth we're going to bust right now is that it's always cleaner air indoors. After all, I've got a UV light. I've got air filters. I've got all kinds of contraptions in my home to keep my air nice and clean. Well, the EPA has actually said that most people's homes can actually be two to five times more polluted than the air that is outdoors. Now that's not to say that the filters and UV lights and things that you have in your home are a waste. It's just important to remember that you need to checking all of those things and taking care of the air quality in your home and also make sure that you get some of that air quality from outside to supplement. Here's Brett. Brett, thanks for joining us again. Happy to be here, Hunter. Good to see you. So tell me, you're the financial expert. What's gonna happen in the market next? What, what, what should I do? I wish I knew, you know? <laughs> I think people get the, the um, thought that people in the financial world know what's gonna happen in the future. The reality is everything's based on the future and the future is unknown. So as a result, for an investor, the best thing to do is probably diversify. Put some money in bonds, some money in stocks, money in different places. And why is diversification helpful? You hear that term a lot. What does that mean? So think about it in simple analogy. If you and I were on a beach selling umbrellas, mm -hmm. and you were selling beach umbrellas and I was selling rain umbrellas, if we only sold one of each, you know, we'd have a hard time every other day probably making money here in South Florida. Yeah. If we sold both of them, rain and beach umbrellas, you at least have business every day. The idea is not to be too high, not to be too low, somewhere in the middle so that you're not at risk. Yeah, so that way um, you get the benefit and the risk of everything instead of just putting all your eggs in one basket. It's really hard to find that one investment can do really, really well. It's really hard to be at the top consistently. So the idea is just sort of be in the middle, be in that consistent level, because to find the needle in the haystack is really difficult. Most investors do not outperform the market, mm -hmm. and most investors don't do well over time trying to be active. All right, so say someone is ready to be patient in the market, they want to diversify, everything you said sounds great, where do we start? Well, they, they can do it themselves. There's a lot of great websites where you can pay a very small fee to, to have somebody manage money for you um, with a simple model pro program. Or if you're really good, do it yourself. But I would advise most people not to do it themselves. Most people do it on a part-time basis. When you're traveling, you're not busy in, uh, you know, working on your investments or thinking about your finances. If you're sick, you may put it off for a few months. So we technically want someone to probably think about hiring a professional that could do this on a full-time basis every day. And that's what you do. Exactly. So what benefit is there to that? Well, it's abil ability to get someone who doesn't want to do this on a full-time basis, isn't interested in doing it full-time, someone who wants to delegate, someone who wants to take that risk and, and worry off of them. We hear from a lot of clients, as soon as they give up that responsibility, it's like a weight off their shoulders. They feel a lot better. If people would like to learn more about what you do or what we've talked about here today, how can they? Sure, our website is eventski.com. We have all sorts of videos, blogs, um, information online. They can find out more about us, mm -hmm. and we'd love to talk to somebody if they have interest. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Brett. Thank you, Hunter. You got it. Salute the nurses of Catholic Health Services and go over the effects of pollen on your health with us when SoFlo Health returns.
You will not believe what I have to tell you next. And that is that you have an air filtration system built within you right now. All you have to do is use it. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. We're outside and we're talking about air quality outside. Now, that air filtration system I'm talking about, it's right here. It's your nose. All you have to do is breathe through it. And hopefully you remember to do so. A lot of people will breathe in through their mouth. Quick, don't breathe. Now breathe in. Did you do it through your nose? Well, hopefully, because when you breathe in through your nose, you are filtering out junk in the air, and you're also making sure that the air temperature is proper for your lungs, and you're humidifying it as well. There are so many benefits through just breathing in through your nose. It can even improve your sleep. We're gonna go through all of this in an upcoming episode of SoFlow Health. But in this one, we're going to talk about something that agitates it when you breathe in, and that's pollen. But first, you gotta watch this, then we'll tell you about pollen. Throughout the month of May, we are saluting nurses with Catholic Health Services, and that's where we are today, Catholic Health Services South Campus St. Anne's, and today I'm joined by Lakeisha and Carla. Thank you both for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. So, Lakeisha, let's start with you. Why did you become a nurse? I watched the nurses care for my elderly grandmother, and that's why I received my motivation to continue an education in nursing. Carla, what about you? My mother was a nurse and a midwife, and I had lots of family members that are in the medical field. So it seemed the natural route to go. Yeah, and what do you guys like about nursing so much? What's your favorite part? I love to see the smile on my patient's face. I love to hear thank you at the end of the day, knowing that I made a difference in their life. And you just love all the stories. Um, a lot of times the families can't be there. So you are the one, you are the next family that they have. Yeah. And what's your experience been like with CHS? Um, I've been doing it for 12 years and I love it. I've done all aspects of nursing, but I decided to do the hospice, which is end of life for me. And it has been an eye opener because sometimes I can see my patients die through deaths in my ship. And it takes that little extra oomph to yeah. get through those days. And Lakeisha, what's your experience been like at CHS? I walked into the building of St. Anne's 16 years ago as an LPN, and then five years later, I continued my education as a registered nurse. Um, I received a promotion as a nursing supervisor, and now I'm a nurse manager. So it's been a wonderful experience here at CHS. Well, congratulations. Thank you. If you'd like to learn more, how can we? Just go to our website, and it will give you all the information that you need regarding all the services that we offer. Excellent. Well, thank you both for your time and thank you for being nurses. We really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Of course. Spring has finally sprung and along with it, pollen is in the air. For some of you, so what? Who cares? For others, that's a, that's a problem. Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what you can do to mitigate the effects of pollen, which are going to be in the air, whether you like it or not. The most obvious thing that you can do is to stay inside, keep your windows and doors closed, have the AC running, and if you have a filter, then even better. If you do find yourself outdoors, try to do so after it's rained. Fortunately, we do get a lot of rain, and when we have that rain, it puts a lot of that pollen that's been floating around on the ground. Another time that you would like to avoid, actually, is the early morning hours of being outside if you can. That's when the pollen levels are the highest. If you do have to do some yard work or you find yourself outside because you either work outside, you went for a walk, or whatever reason, you feel that you're probably covered in pollens, then it's a good idea before you enter your home, if you can, decently, remove as much clothing as you can, and then get yourself into the shower, get it out of your hair, under your nails, and as much as you can so that you don't then put them on your eyes, nose, ears, or mouth. Finally, one part that I haven't really covered just yet are antihistamines. It's helpful if you take them before you leave the house and you give yourself some time for your body to activate them before you just hop out into the pollen. However, if you're not worried about the pollen, then get outside and enjoy beautiful areas like this park and natural preserves. There's plenty of them here in South Florida. We love to get out during this time of year before it gets too terribly hot. But in case you thought the whole pollen thing was a big joke, I actually sat on a bench before doing this and I've got plenty of pollen to show for it. So uh, avoid the pollen if it bothers you, but don't be afraid to get outside. Take the antihistamines if you must, but overall, stay healthy throughout the year, and that'll help whoever you are. We interrupt this welcome back to SoFlow Health to point out that there are some more hens with us today. There's Mama Moorhen and her chicks. We learned about more hens on a previous episode of SoFlow Health 
where we went to Flamingo Gardens and we met the manager who roamed around the aviary. So if you see them, don't bother them, but do enjoy them. All right, let's continue talking about air quality. Follow me. Now, welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and we did it. We talked about air quality while enjoying it outside. Well, you probably enjoyed it inside unless you're somewhere outside that has a television. And in that case, great. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the moral of the story is make sure that you are breathing in good quality air. We talk about nutrition, fitness, and sleep, all these other things around health a lot. Something that we forget to talk about is breathing because we just do it automatically. And it's good every once in a while to make sure that you're purposely breathing as well with good quality air. In fact, take three deep breaths with me right now. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Two more. Last one, as deep as you can go. Wasn't that great? With just those three deep breaths, if you joined me, you have lowered your blood pressure some, lowered your cortisol levels, and you probably feel pretty good because you've oxygenated yourself a little more than usual by just being conscious and hopefully diaphragmatically breathing, which means breathing with your diaphragm. That's all we have for this week's episode of SoFlow Health. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to learn more, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlow Health on SoFlowShows.com. On YouTube as well, if you search SoFlow Health. And you can follow us using at SoFlow Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. Until next week, it's goodbye, good health, and great fresh air. <sighs> next week on SoFlow Health, personal trainer Alex Rivera has movements to help you strengthen and protect your lower back. Plus, delicious healthy eats from a South Florida favorite. It's all right here next week on SoFlow Health. We'll see you then.